Now, let us pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for who you are and what you are continuing to do in our lives. We thank you right now for being in our midst. So God, open our hearts and our minds so that we can hear and receive what you have for us on tonight. That we may be healed and transformed and can live obedient. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Tonight, I'm going to use a subject Things change when you pray. Tonight, we are going to talk about a king, a great king who ruled over Israel and went and went through. He made it through. The events that I'm going to talk about tonight can probably help us today. This great king's name was Hezekiah. And Hezekiah was only 25 years old when he became the king of Judah. And his reign went for about 29 years. Ruling the land was the role of his family. For Hezekiah is the son of the king that ruled before him, Ahaz. And his father was not a good king. He was a terrible king. But Hezekiah learned most of his religion from his mother. And that happens today because most mothers go to church and care of their children when the dad stays at home. And he was raised in the church. And many of us that have been raised in the church, we got a lot of wisdom and what we might call common sense to go with us today. And it helped us in life. So now in 2 Kings, the third, 18th verse in the third chapter verse, it tells us about the character of the king Ezra. It tells us the character of King Ezra. And it said that he did everything that was right in the eyes of the Lord according to all that David, his father, had done. He did what was right in the eye of the Lord. Today, Christian, wouldn't it be nice for someone to look at what we did in life and say that we did it all under the guidance of the Lord? Hezekiah did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and he was not influenced by the opinions that were held by the public. How he was raised did not hold him back. Oh, even what was going on in the world. Hezekiah served the Lord. He did what was right. He didn't let his friends, his colleagues, Nobody's opinion weighed more than God as far as Hezekiah was concerned. Hezekiah was so steadfast in his search too because he knew it would take more than reading and studying God's word for him. For it is not just about following a set of rules written in a book. Hezekiah wanted more than anything to see life 
from God's perspective. He truly wanted to understand the God he served. And he strived to do the same. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord. It's one thing to say that you love God. It's a whole lot more to show that you love him. And Hezekiah is one of the best. Examples for us. A lot of Christians say that they love God. But when you look at their life. They don't look like it. But once you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ according to Romans 10, 9 and 10, love and obedience to him should come easy. Now in 2 Kings 18 and 4, it reads, He removed the high places and the broken pillars and cut down the ashes. And he broke into pieces the bronze circle that Moses had made. For until those days, the people of Israel had made an offering to it, and it was called Nehushtan which means the temple of God was in a place called Judah, the city that Hezekiah ruled. This temple was the only one of its kind for miles. But this is the only place of worship that God needed for the time being. But you know how church folks are. They felt like that was too far to travel. So they decided to make more convenient places of worship for themselves. Some of us are okay with worshiping God as long as, as it is convenient for us to do so. So the followers of God within, the Jew, within Judah set up all these altars around the town so that the citizens that didn't feel like going to the temple would be able to worship in the town. Although this solution served the people's well, it was still one God never ordained. Plus all the kings that ruled the neighboring cities knew setting up these altars was wrong to do so. But they still do nothing to stop the people from doing as they wished. But Hezekiah stood in front of them all and told them that worship is not intended to be convenient. This is even true today. In this area of the internet and all that finish our sentences for us, it seems that all we look for is conveniences. The less work we have to do in the long run, the better. Some people don't even want to get up in the morning and get dressed to go to church and have fine cars. They'd rather wash cars than to go to church. Some of them think that television evangelists is the thing for Sunday. Convenience is, is nice. But convenience also keeps in mind that it is best for us 
not what's best for God. We learn that church is not about ourselves. And I pray that we'll just get delivered from ourselves. There are some church folks that come to church each time the church is open. And then there are some just come when they want to. And you know how that is. But if they are on program, they're always there. Some will come if a special preacher is preaching. Some will come just to complain about a little thing that made them mad enough not to be back for a while. There are Christians that come when it's convenient. And there are also Christians that come when it's convenient and there's something in the church for them. Church should not be about you and me. Church has not been designed for your convenience. It is designed for your sacrifice. We're supposed to bring something in, not get notice for what we do. In 2 Samuel, David said, I will not give anything to God that doesn't cost me anything. Everything we do for Christ is supposed to be a sacrifice. We come to church to be equipped with the word to be encouraged, to be inspired. All these things are good to get out of going to church regularly. But the reason we go to church is to worship God and bring a sacrifice of praise before him. I'm grateful to have an incredible online ministry. Sometimes I don't like the songs they sing because I cannot sing. But I always keep in mind that it's not about me and it never will be. We must learn how important it is to serve a real God because he means business. We shouldn't treat church like it's some kind of club because it serves a much bigger purpose than just that. It's time for us to focus on what God wants from us and not what's convenient for us to do for him. We need to be like Hezekiah, who did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, despite the amount of trouble he went through to serve him. Again, in Samuel, in Kings, tell us Hezekiah trust in the Lord. He held fast to the Lord and he did not depart from the Lord. And because of his devotion to the Lord, the Lord was with him everywhere he did, he went, and everywhere he went, he prospered. We need to learn to spend time with God. It'll shape our destiny. Sometimes it can be between life and death when we are rooted in God's word. Proverbs 3. Four and six. The easy standard versions reads, So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. 
in your own ways. Acknowledge him. And he will make straight your path. All the scripture is saying is that God will clear a path for you when you devote your life and to him. He will clear your path and put you in the right position to be blessed and meet all your needs. If we live right and be true to ourselves and God, we will want for nothing. It is God and no one else that clears the path. To me, it's like this. Everything that is preached is not for me. So sometimes I may be sitting in the pews confused while the preacher wrote a whole sermon about something I didn't need. At the same time, everybody struggles with different things. So, sermons that seem fruitless to me may be absolutely life-changing for someone else. So we must learn to stay in our lane and get what God has for us. Why look at other people's plate when God has given you a full plate? We have to be like Hezekiah and be steadfast in serving the Lord, no matter what anybody else says. How do you think God transformed your life? Because he cleared your path. The time that you spend with God is meaningful. Trust God in doing what you know he will do for you and he will put you in the right place and the right position with the right people when you trust God. He will open that door that no man can open and he can close that same door that no man can close. But it's only when you trust in God will you gain vision and clarity for the next step in your life. Our faithfulness and our obedience brings God's favor into our life. I read early in 2 Kings that the Lord was with Hezekiah and whatever he wanted, he prospered. Why did he prosper? Because he did what was God told him to do. You will always prosper when you do what God tells you to do. You will never fail when you choose to do the will of God. In Psalms 1, and verse 1, verses 1 through 3, it reads, Blessed is the man who walk not in the counsel of the weakness, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law he meditates day and night. Let's look at prosperity. Prosperity means that you can that we can have abundance and we are abundant we can have anything that we want. Nice cars, big homes, fine clothes. But we must make wise decisions in prosperity by following God's way. 
when we do it God's way, that reminds us that we are not following our feelings of following the world. We are following God. The word says the promises is that I will prosper. That's why some of us are prospering because we are following God's will. When prosperity falls upon us for all of our hard works, the world don't understand how you're getting all of this and that. You will have people even asking you, how you got that? But sometimes prosperity is not always material things. Sometimes it's the things money cannot buy. Like happiness or peace of mind. There are people that have money but have no peace. I would rather have peace than money. Prosperity with God means God has put you in the position for your divine purpose. And it's up to you to fulfill it. See, back in the day, when Hezekiah had worked so hard, he became sick. And God sent someone to tell him that he was surely that. And let's read what the scripture said. And that's Second Kings. 21 through 7. In those days, Hezekiah became sick and was at the point of death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came to him and said, Thus saith the Lord, set your house in order for you shall surely die. You shall not recover. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, Now, O Lord, please remember how I walked before you in a faithfulness with a whole heart. And I have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. And before Isaiah had gone out of the middle of the court, the word of the Lord came to him. Turn back and say to Hezekiah, the leader of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, your father. I heard your prayers. I've seen your tears. Behold, I will heal you. And I will add 15 years to your life. Not only that, I will deliver you and this city out of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my sake and for my servant, Saint David. And Isaiah said, bring a cake of figs and let them take and lay them on the board that he may recover. See, here's the guy became sick and at the point of death. No. 
And Isaiah the prophet came to him and told him, set your house in order for you shall die and not recover. Since Hezekiah had been doing everything that he knew to do, this seemed unfair to many of us who have read this passage before. Hezekiah is doing everything God told him to do. And now, sick unto death. What happens in your life after you feel like you've done everything you can and everything right? Just for someone to come along and disrupt your life. Our natural response would be from the flesh. First thing is to get angry with God. In your life, have you ever felt like that God is not being fair? When you're doing everything right by him and doing everything you were told to do? And even then, you still lost your house, probably lost your job, maybe even lost your family. It just doesn't seem right when you know you are doing everything right. We think it's not fair. When we look over at the other person that seemingly doesn't live according to God, get all these things. But I'm here tonight to tell you we must not look at other people. Because no matter what we heard about them or what we have seen from them, we don't fully know what relationship they have with God. So we don't know what it took for that person to receive the blessings he's given. This story of Hezekiah lets us know that life will bring us some dark days. Rich, poor, black, white, high, low, you will see some dark days in your life. There will be some heartbreaks and some heartaches some stress, even death comes. That's how living on this earth works. I can remember the darkest day. I was going to the hospital knowing my daughter would not recover. It was a dark day. It didn't seem fair. I thought about how faithful and how diligent Gently, a servant of the Lord, she worked so hard in the church for this end to come. I knew she was a great help at the church. We all grasped for the answer. We know the unknown never provides when the day is dark. Even their family members of people in prison the spouse of someone who suddenly dies, a child who is abandoned by one that are responsible for taking care of them. These people and many other experiences or have had experience. Dark times like these will tell you they will be scrambling, begging for an answer on why. This had to happen. What did they do to deserve this? Think of what Hezekiah was just been told he's going to die. He gave his all to God and still could not afford death. But listen to what Hezekiah did. He turned his face 
to the wall and prayed to the God. And then not only that, he said, remember, Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully with wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your sight. And he just cried. See, and then God heard what he said. And he turned the prophet Isaiah around to go back and tell him the Lord of your father David told him to say, I've heard your praise. I've seen your tears. And now I'm going to add to your life. And not only will I add to your life, I will deliver this city from the hands of the king. Hezekiah, knowing he was facing the life sentence illness, he did not look for remedies. He turned to the Redeemer. Even when threatened illness, he still turned to God. He said, I'm not going to change just because my circumstances circumstances have changed. Because Hezekiah had faithfully followed God for so long, he knew what prayer, that prayer works. In Kings, we read where the Assyrians sent a letter saying that it was coming for Hezekiah. And his king. That's like getting a text today from a hater or a bully saying that we found out where you live and we are coming to beat you up. But Hezekiah did not respond with angry or worried. Hezekiah got up, takes this letter to the temple, and spread it out before the Lord. He opened the letter and said, look at what they just wrote. And the Bible said he prayed earnestly. And God said, I will be the Assyrian. Hezekiah knew that prayer works. Church, we must learn that prayer is our first response, not our last resort. We must learn to pray no matter how bad the situation is. It doesn't matter how hopeless it may look. What Hezekiah did, he went straight to God. He did not go to his friends or his family. He didn't even go to the doctor. He didn't even ask Isaiah the prophet to pray for him. He just turned his face to the wall and prayed. Because he knew no one could pray for him like he was going to call upon God. For himself. We should never allow a bad situation to make us forget that God is not in control. He is always sovereign. God is always in control. And we just need to pray. I mean, we got to start praying like never become. Four. Keep praying until you get an answer. The battle is already won in prayer. Battles is not in a pity part or whining or gossiping. Nothing is not well done without prayer. There is no reason why when we leave God out of our situation. 
we need to always pray, even if the situation is personal or spiritual. The word of God calls us to a high standard to pray. There is power in prayer. Prayer is a direct line to the almighty God. It is where we find strength, guidance, and peace in our lives when we bring our battles to the Lord. We are just not speaking words into the atmosphere. We are engaging in a spiritual warfare. We're inviting God to step into our circumstances and fight our battle. Prayer should always be our first response. I just want us to keep on praying and never lose hope. Don't lose faith. Just keep on praying until God changes the circumstances or he changes us. Keep praying until God fix the situation or heal your soul. Keep praying and know that God still answers prayer. Our God is still in the miracle-making business. He's still raising the dead. He's still opening blind eyes. Still transforming souls. So don't stop praying. We know enough word to be like Hezekiah, to turn our face to the wall and pray. Pray regular and pray enough. Maybe you will get an answer. It was possible that Hezekiah was still praying on his deathbed bed when Isaiah returned to tell him that God had answered his prayer. It may take some time for God to answer you, but he heard your prayers as soon as you addressed him. The prayers are not lost, church. God just moves on his own time. Sometimes prayers are answered right away and others are kept in God's heavenly storage for a later day. You must believe that God has heard your prayers. Everything that you say, whether you whisper, moan, scream, cry, even when you don't know how to pray. God hear what you are trying to say and take notes of it. He understands all prayers, no matter the language. So you cannot stop praying not only praying to God, even his, not only Hezekiah praying to God, even his most daring hour, it extended his life. But God personally assured him the victory. Hezekiah will have over his enemies. God will do more than you asked him for. If you're just willing to give him the battle. Prayer changes things. Especially if we will step aside and give it all to God. May God bless you. Father God, it's again that we have come to the close of another service. 
And oh God, just teach us to draw closer to you and pray. And God, you will meet everything in our lives that we need. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen.